Good evening. A Church of England bishop has issued an extremely rare formal apology to two brothers from Eastbourne who were sexually abused by a paedophile priest. In his letter, the Bishop of Chichester accepts that the Reverend Roy Cotton should never have been ordained. The bishop also accepts that errors were made in assessing his fitness for ministry. The victims, who are now in their 40s, have both received significant financial compensation for the abuse they suffered. Our Home Affairs correspondent Colin Campbell has our exclusive story. It is a forced, rare apology and substantial payout from the Church of England to victims of sexual abuse who've had to fight for almost 20 years to get to the truth. I have completely lost faith in the Church of England as an organisation. You know, this is, these are people who stand up before us and teach us, you know, to be loyal and faithful and have integrity and compassion. Um, and yet, when it comes to the crunch, they don't deliver these things. As a 10-year-old Eastbourne choir boy, John, not his real name, was targeted, groomed and abused by this Anglican priest, Reverend Roy Cotton. What is disturbing is that the church knew he was a convicted sex offender, but they still allowed him to be ordained and gain contact with children. The abuse that I suffered at the hands of Cotton was severe and it went on for a very long time. I mean, nearly 10 years. Um, it happened regularly in hotel rooms, in, on camping trips, you know, so there was no respite. John was also abused by this former Bexhill vicar, Colin Pritchard, who sexually assaulted him when he was 14. Pritchard was sent to prison in 2008. You know, some of the more disturbing aspects are the collusion that there obviously was between people and, you know, some of the most terrifying things that happened were when there was more, one, more than one person involved and I was absolutely, well, just scared stiff that, you know, they were going to both do things to me together. Apologising for mistakes and errors, this is the letter John and his brother demanded from the church as part of their settlement. In it, the Bishop of Chichester acknowledges that Roy Cotton should not have been ordained as a priest in 1967. He'd previously abused another child. That errors of judgment were made about Cotton and his fitness for ministry. The bishop also accepts that had senior clergy checked Cotton's church career file, then the police might have decided to prosecute Cotton prior to his death in 2006. I believe there has been a certain amount of cover-up. Now, whether the cover-up is malicious in that people are trying to defend paedophiles, I do not know. I certainly hope that's not the case. The failings allowed Cotton to abuse a number of children, including John's younger brother, who was also a choir boy at St Andrews. Gary said he fled to the US six years ago to escape the haunting memories. It affects me every day of my life. It affects me in every human interaction I have. I get constant reminders and flashbacks even now. Um, and it's a life sentence. Desperate to stop Cotton, the brothers went to the police in 1996, but the investigation was abandoned three years later. There was not enough independent evidence. Soon after, though, new victims went to the church, but it would appear the church did not pass this information on to detectives. Cotton had already got a previous conviction. You know, the allegations had been made by my brother and myself, and, you know, there were other victims coming forward you know, one would have thought that you would actively try to cooperate with the authorities to make sure that a man like this did not work in your organisation. Not only did the missed opportunities deny victims here in Eastbourne the right to timely justice, but they also allowed two paedophile priests the opportunity to continue working here in the Diocese of Chichester for at least another decade. Abused by a man who should never have been ordained and left to fight for the truth, John says no amount of money or apologetic words can ever make up for the distress and suffering caused to him and his brother. Colin Campbell, BBC South East Today, Eastbourne. Well, the Church of England has commissioned an investigation to find out how paedophile priests Roy Cotton and Colin Pritchard were allowed to work at Sussex churches after allegations 
of serious sexual abuse had been made against them. It will be led by Baroness Butler Sloss, who was formerly Britain's most senior female judge. She'll assess the way that the church managed its own investigation into the allegations and she'll review the support that the church has given victims of abuse. Lady Butler Sloss has a great deal of personal authority, not just as an Anglican, but as somebody who was a very senior judge. On the other hand, she's not a judge now and she has no specific legal powers to do anything. She will use her judgment, her skills, her authority to ask questions, but she can't demand that people give answers. If they don't want to, I'm sure she'll say so. So how have the victims been treated? Well, it's understood that Roy Cotton abused at least eight people. There have been compensation payments, but the church has not disclosed how much money it's paid out. And it is extremely rare for the church to issue any kind of formal apology. Apologies can be very important, but we have to recognise that these apologies, by and large, are forced out of the institutions that make them. They're very rarely forthcoming without a lot of prompting and with a lot, without a lot of persuasion, um, probably by the, the insurers of, of the diocese and things like that. Uh, I'm not knocking an apology, but a, an apology has to be backed up with action. Well, let's cross live to our Home Affairs correspondent, Colin Campbell, who's outside St Andrew's Church in Eastbourne, where Roy Cotton worked as a priest in the 1980s. Um, Colin, what is the Church of England actually saying this evening? Well, Rob, as you can imagine, there are a lot of serious questions for the Diocese of Chich Chichester. Uh, why and how was Roy Cotton able to work in this church here in Eastbourne uh, in the 80s and elsewhere in East Sussex with that previous conviction? Why was Roy Cotton also why didn't they check his career case file? Senior clergy could have done that when John and his brother uh, made their complaints to the police in 1996. And Colin, what kind of an impact has this had for the victims? Well, as you can imagine, uh, John says that trying to get this apology has preoccupied much of his adult life. He says this was never about the money. It was always about getting acceptance from the Church of England that he had, that there were failures and mistakes made by the Church of England. Blunders which John says have compounded the distress and suffering felt by him and his brother. Colin Campbell in Eastbourne, thank you very much. Well, Baroness Butler Sloss is expected to publish her conclusions within the next few weeks, and the church has promised that her recommendations will be made public. A story of paedophile abuse in Sussex, which will then have an impact that will be felt throughout the Church of England.